Hey folks, I'm Mr. Hartzler and I wanted to talk to you about Principles of Engineering's Activity 3.1.4. This is while loops and if-else structures with VEX. And we are mostly going to be looking at in this episode the light sensor and the flashlight. We're going to turn them on and off, uh, turn the flashlight on and off based on what the light sensor is registering. This is part one of that 3.1.4 activity. And I have that, the first chunk of that typed up uh, that they make you do on the little packet. So if you're working through that activity, they tell you all of this. Just type all of this in. I kind of want to explain what it is, and then we're going to modify it. So we have our task main, so pretty much anything within this bracket and this bracket is going to be read by the cortex, or like the brains of the operation here. And we start off with a while, one equal equal one. So a while means while this thing in parentheses is true, keep circling through all of the stuff underneath the while. So while one equals one, that is always true. So this is an infinite loop. I'm going over this forever and ever. So this is an infinite, infinite loop because this statement is always true. We always use double equal signs as well. Below that, you see this little squiggly bracket and this squiggly bracket. Everything between those two is inside of this loop. So let's say here, this is outside my loop. You can see you know, 18, that's where a loop starts. 27, that's where the loop ends. If I type in here something like start motor, my right motor at 127, this is never going to be read by the robot because I am always stuck right in here between these two brackets. I never kick out of it because this statement is never false. So that's kind of important. Next thing I want to discuss is the ifs. So it's an if and then the condition. So if this thing is true, I read the stuff below it. And the stuff below it comes from this squiggly bracket here to this squiggly bracket. So all of this is read by the robot if this condition is true. If this condition is false, I go all the way past it and I read the next thing. And in this case, it happens to be another if statement. So if this condition is true, this thing will happen. If for some, in or for instance, neither of these two conditions are true, I will just keep coming back, checking to see if one still equals one, and it will. And then I'll just keep going through and reading it again and again. And nothing will ever happen because none of the conditions ever end up being true. The packet tells you to do 700 for the light sensor value. I had to change that because I couldn't block it with my hand and make it actually be um, 700 or, har or higher. So I used 600 because that actually works for me. And this is set up right now that if the sensor reads less than, or sorry, greater than 600, flashlight turns on. So that means it's dark in the room, flashlight turns on. If the sensor is less than or equal to 600, it turns off. So if it's bright in the room, turn flashlight off. Let's see what this looks like. I'm gonna compile it. I'm gonna download the program. Wait for it to load. There it is. So I need to start the program. And we're going to look. Light sensor right now is 80. That is less than 600. So my light should be off. Now let's hover over it, make it dark. It's dark. You can see over there the flashlight turned on. My light sensor is reading 670. Move my hand. Now it's bright. So it's reading 80 ish. Light turned off. And you'll notice if I keep covering this up and uncovering it, the light turns on and off. That is because I continue to search. So every, as fast as a computer can read, you know, thousandths of a second, it is checking to see if this condition is true and then going through the line. What they wanted us to do in this case when we're trying to modify it and make it a little bit of our own, and that can be read by just above right here. We have it programmed right now so that if it is dark, turn the flashlight on. If it is bright, turn the flashlight off. We're going to change this to an if-else statement. So if it is dark, turn on the flashlight, else turn it off. So this first chunk, this even the loop is still good. If is still good, that's still good. We're now going to change this to an else. And I just need else and then turn flashlight off. Let's compile that program. Awesome. Download the robot. I said awesome because there's no errors popping up. No little red circles coming up here. No words in the bottom. Start the program. Good. Flashlight's off because it's bright. Cover it up. Flashlight turn on. Awesome. That is super simple. The reason to do an if else is if 
whatever we want to have happen is kind of a binary situation. Either the sensor is greater than 600, right here, this condition, or it's less than 600. I'm not doing a range like 100 to 600, and then 600 to 700, 700 to 800. In that case, I'm going to need a lot more ifs. But if it's just, it's this, or it's everything else, I can do an if-else situation. So that's kind of nice. It just makes it so I don't have to type all of this extra stuff. That's really all it is. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If it was, click that like button. Oh, I also want to describe this real quick. The squiggly brackets, you'll notice else, it also uses those. So it's between those two things. Oh, and I've got to get a shout out. This is Eli and Skyler's uh, test bed. They did a really good job. Their wire management or cable management is awesome. This thing looks really good. So I just wanted to give a little shout out to them. They did a great job. Uh, thanks, guys. If this video is helpful, please give it a like and uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this awesome stuff. Thanks, everybody. Bye.